Welcome back to a new episode here in Swalwi. In today's episode, um, as some of you might have seen a couple of days ago this past week, I uploaded a video for a day asking if you guys wanted to learn how to, I'm showing it on the screen right now, um, do sort of like divergent paths in motion graphics in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. And yeah, so after trying it yesterday a couple of times and then running into some issues, I'm going to try to redo it again today and see if I can actually do it without running into the same weird issues that I did run into yesterday. All right. So first, let me check the project settings. Um, I changed the timeline resolution to 720 just for the sake of this video so I can record it better without having like CPU issues or whatever in this laptop that I use for most of the editing and all that stuff so let's get started right away so we're gonna create a fusion composition and i'm gonna make it like let me just make it 10 seconds long just for the sake of it and when we're in here the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a background and then we're gonna reshape this background uh there let me make it a little bit of color just for now so i can see it um so the first thing we need to do is we're going to go here to layout, I mean to image, and we're going to uncheck the auto resolution. And I'm going to change this width to, let's make it more square-like. And then this one is going to be really tall, so let's put 3000. So that's going to be our background, so our animation is going to flow upwards here. And then later on, you can build your shapes and like smaller or bigger, depending on how much screen do you want to use. Um, that will depend on the camera and all that stuff that you're using here in 3D. So, all right, let's. So, for the first thing we need to do is we need to do the circle shapes. So, for that, we're going to copy this background. But before that, we're going to create a merge node. So, we're going to copy this background up here. We're going to make it black. Well, actually, no, let's make it a color red all right so first here we're gonna create our shape and we're gonna merge it so we see that there and we can make it a little bit thicker on the eye on this on the sides on the stroke on the border and then we're gonna make it smaller and the reason why I copied this background here it's so that we can use the whole thing um for the movement of these if i create a new background the new background is going to have the same resolution as our project or our timeline so it's going to be smaller and then if you want to drag this mask out it's going to disappear so that's the reasoning behind it so we're going to copy and paste this for the second one it's going to be on top and then we're going to just go up and put it right in there in place and you can rename this if you want and that is pretty much it for the for the base so for the next part what we need to do is we need to create a new merge the next part is the actual lines so we're gonna do the same thing again we're gonna copy this background but we're gonna make it transparent this time and we're gonna make it alpha and then on this one we're gonna create a paint note like that and then we're gonna create a merge that we can connect these two and then go down there that way and i'll show you why in a second but we're not doing anything right here on this paint note yet um the first thing we need to do is we're going to go here and create the pol a polygon node and we're not going to connect it to anything but we're going to leave it here so we know it's from that section and we're going to go here to the center and draw the path that we want to have our shape go through or like our line go to through and we're gonna try to end it right in the middle there and after you have these you wanna go here and you right click and then we're gonna remove this polygon one polyline I'm not sure if you have to do this step but let's just do it but let's just do it so we can just to prevent any issues from happening so we're gonna remove it and then we're gonna publish it there and then we go here to the paint node and we're going to go here to stroke controls. We're not seeing anything. And the reason for that is that we need to pr press here in the polyline stroke animation in here. So, that, so then we can animate the lines going up and down or moving around. 
So once we have that, we're gonna go um, here and right click, and we're gonna connect it to the polygon pull line value. And then we have that magically. Um, I didn't know how to do this, so I had because the first time I did it, I did it only with the paint node. But this polygon, we can use it later on to add objects so that follow that same path, like the circle in the other one. But I'm gonna do another short video to explain that because I think this one might take too long if I go right in depth into it. All right, so then once we have that, this line, we can animate this and Let's go here to frame 20 and we're gonna go down to zero. Then we're gonna go 70. You don't have to, these are all random numbers. Uh, it doesn't have to be that. And we can go here to the polygon and if we, if we edit this polygon, it's gonna edit the same mask. And you're gonna see that changing it, we can, it actually allows it, it follows it. So that's the beauty of it. I guess you could say it's beauty. Um, where is it? Uh, I think it was shift five. I'm trying to make it a little bit more curvy right here, just to make it a little bit less sharp on the edges of the turns right here. And for that to change only one side, you have to click on it, hold it, and then press control. So, you, so then you can move only one of them because otherwise it will move both of those. All right, so anyway, so now that we have our line, and as I said, I'm not going to create that circle that was following down the path in this video, but I'm going to do it on another one. So let's just do ahead and let's go ahead and copy the same paint stuff into our composition right in the side of it. And right here, if we select this one, if we move it, we're going to have our next um, path that our paint is going to follow. All right, and then just fix it there like that. Yeah, that's perfect. And let's see, let's test the view of it because sometimes it will freak out and it has some issues when you just write, when you just copy and paste that. So we have to check, the way to check that out is we go to the paint node here and once we click polyline, we should be able to change the color. If it doesn't change, it's because we have to reconnect a bunch of stuff. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go right click here, and then we have to connect it to the polygon one one value, and then we are able to move these around and just do that. But now we have the issue of it just showing that same color and the animation is not working. So the way to fix that is we're gonna go back ahead All right, so for some reason when I was reconnecting it, the animation would just deactivate again. So all we have to do is go back here and put the keyframes for the right on animation. And then we have it pretty much the same thing and it should be working fine. And let's put this one a little bit of like a sharper color, a yellow color. We're gonna change this one to a bluish color. And then you will do the same thing for the third line. You will just copy and paste this and then unpublish and make sure to check the right on animation keyframes because when you copy those, it might get a little bit, um, it will just might become a little bit buggy and not work correctly. Okay, so once you have that, um, you pretty much have the whole animation set and done, right? We, you can add motion blurs and the glow effect and whatever here just add it for now just because uh, we don't have to worry about that later on just simple and the next step would be to add the camera which is gonna follow and give us that movement effect so for that what we first have to do is add an image plane I'm gonna put it on this screen and then we're gonna connect these everything into this one so now we have our 2d image in a 3d format sort of then here we're going to create a merge node and we're going to create a camera on it and then lastly a render Whoop, not the render on the camera but on this merge node and then this render we can connect it to our media out 
So now we're not able to see anything right here on the screen because that's what the camera views. And the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go here and select the camera and we're gonna position it where we want it to be right at the beginning. Um, there. And now that we have our camera and everything, we can change the background because we're able to see it now. Okay, so then when you have the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna animate the camera movement the same way that it at the same speed or the same keyframe. So from 20 to 70, we're gonna animate and we're gonna animate this Y translation. You can also animate the Z translation, but that will be later on right in the middle. And I'm gonna show you that in a second. After we create the first one, we're gonna go back and all the way to the end up here. And we're gonna create another, and that's automatically creating that same following movement. And then we can also animate the right on so the things close up. So we're gonna go back to our paints and change the start animation. And we're having that weird white line again there, which is which I still have to figure out for some reason why it's appearing. Um, but yeah, we're not gonna let us let that make us lose focus right now. I think the way that I solved that was by I just create a new paint node and connect it there. And I connected this new paint node to the path. Uh, we have to unpublish this again and publish it. And then I connected it to the new path. And I think now we should be fine with the animation. So yeah, that was the way to do it. So I guess you would have to like sort of like copy and, and create a new node every time you're doing it just to avoid those problems. Um, yeah, so in order to avoid those, you just have to create a new node every time. In order to sell the effect a little bit more, what we want to do is um, we want to go to our background, to our main background. We're going to go here and on this one, we're going to add a paint node. And on this paint node, we first have to go to the brush controls and change this shape a little bit. We can view it on our screen right here, or we can use this one so we can see the dots. All right, so we're going to select this paint node. And before you do anything, you want to adjust the stroke duration because when you paint um, that your timeline, that your animation is go going through, because otherwise it will just last for a couple of frames and then disappear. So we're just going to put a um, hundred because that's our length right here. And then we can just put a couple of dots right here. And that will sort of like show that there's an actual movement. Then we can also change the color and add a couple of lines. Whoops. Okay, anyways, so now when you have your camera moving, it will show us, it will just sell the effect, the moving effect a little bit more. All right, so that basically sells the effect better by adding that movement there. And yeah, so then the last thing to do is you can go here to the paint and you can add motion blur. Yeah, so then you can play around with the size and everything. You can pretty much tweak anything on your lines and then add more lines, add as many lines as you want. You can make them go off camera, in camera and be as creative as you want. But this is the basics for it. So let's just go right here and let me just render it real quick. And yeah, that's a basic Divergent Paths tutorial here in DaVinci Resolve 16 and how you can create that effect. And on the next video that I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to add this shape and make it follow a certain path. So then that will make things look a little bit cooler, even cooler, I guess you could say. And I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned something awesome and that you had fun. And I hope that you can re replicate this, make it on your own. And I hope to see you in the next video here in Suave.